Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Race Face Drive in 5 podcast here on RaceFace.tv. Jacob Seelman back with you, bringing back Cole Denton for his latest exploits through June and the first part of July. And kind of like the last couple episodes, Cole, you come in off a lot of success between Cordell, your home track, and the Thursday Thunder Series at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Combined overall, you've had... Six Young Lions wins, eight total podiums, and 10 top five finishes in your last 11 races. It's been, uh, you said at the beginning you never expected what you guys have done. And yet here we are, it's mid-July, and you're still doing it. I mean, this is amazing. And again, we did not expect to be able to do this this I mean, my second year in legend cars and I was looking so much forward to Thursday Thunder because the track's always different every year and it's exciting to race. Then we get there and third and round one and was really had a really good shot at winning it. So we came back, started winning a bunch of races, uh, had a part failure in one of them, but we were still going to win that one. Yeah. <laughs> so it's been amazing this season with the Thursday Thunder wins and Cordell and we really were just kind of hoping to get podiums and a couple wins here and there and we're winning almost every race. <laughs> I was gonna say now you're sitting undefeated as far as Young Lions at Cordell you've got 18 perfect score wins this season which for those who don't know a perfect score for a NX Legends car race is 100 points and 21 wins total. It just almost like a magical run. Let's talk about Thursday Thunder specifically, though. Um, seven of the eight races done. You've got one more race uh, next Thursday, but four wins in seven races, even with the one DNF uh, for the parts failure and, and crash that you had kind of midway through. You're still the point leader going into the finale. This, Am I right to say that this Thursday Thunder is everything you, you hoped it would be and then some? I mean, it really is. Uh, I wish it would have been a little bit bigger points league going into the championship race because it puts a lot of pressure. But I think this is really everything we could have hoped for for second year at Thursday Thunder and the legend. And it's it's just so hard to be able to get one win at Thursday Thunder that it's just amazing that we can we can win almost every race. So it's it's going to be really tight at the last race. It puts a lot of pressure on me, but it's, it's been really great this year. Six points is the number. I know you, and it seems like it always comes down to this, doesn't it? <laughs> you and your good buddy, Bryce Sanders. Uh, I know you two have had a couple of really good battles this season, and I, I imagine that makes it at least a little less stressful knowing that it's somebody that you can race clean against but still race hard against during that finale. Did you lose sound? They were talking. I could not hear you. Oh. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> I roughly remember what I was saying. So, um, that's we, my bad. Yeah, sit, no, six points um, between you and Bryce going into the finale. And I am at, I know you said it's going to be stressful, but I imagine at least a little less stressful knowing that you're racing for this championship against somebody a who you're good friends with and b you guys have had a lot of really close battles in the past and this season to where you know you can race hard but it'll be clean racing too well that's one good thing about Bryce and I know that it's really close and it can all come down to if you finish in the top three or if you don't but I do know that if it comes down to it we will race each other clean because we're good friends and we've never really bumped each other and we can race clean. That's one good thing to know coming into the championship race against Bryce. So I know it's going to be really fun and it's going to be a clean battle no matter what. So it's just really whoever is the best at the end, that's who it's going to be. But hopefully we can get it done. <laughs> I was going to say, we're not going to get our ahead of ourselves just yet, but I am curious just 
championship aside, what has this Thursday Thunder run meant to you as a driver, confidence-wise? I mean, there, there's so many. I, I feel like I've watched you just kind of grow into a into a completely different driver over the course of these last seven or eight weeks just from that shot in the arm of, okay, we really are doing this. I mean, it is a really huge confidence boost considering that Coming into the year, we were like, all right, let's get a couple wins here and there. And now that we're winning a bunch at Atlanta, especially because that is the hardest place to win at for me, because I just could not get a win last year. And now I'm winning a bunch at Atlanta. So it's going to be really tough. And it's a huge confidence boost because we went into here like, okay, let's get a couple wins. And now we're winning a lot. So it's going to be really exciting. (laughs) Exactly. Let's talk Cordell for a minute, because uh, like we mentioned off the top, still undefeated in Young Lions competition there. I know not every win it has been overall, but you've been top of top in your class in every one of the eight races this season. Points leader by a very large margin, trying to go for another track championship there. What is it about that place that has just made you so good the last two years? Well, one place that that. I'm really good at is Cordell and it's because when I started learning how to drive a race car and go-karts and bandoleros, I started at a a really high bank track that's shaped just like it, just a little bit smaller. So I've kind of just been used to it, just going there for one race and I got used to it and I've loved it ever since. And it's super fast. It's pretty high banked and it's a track that I'm really good at on iRacing and real life. So a track like that is kind of my style remind me three three bandolero championships there already uh two bandolero Bandolero and one legend and one legend car so you're going for fourth track title overall (laughs) second in the legend car which i know is is a big deal for you you mentioned at the start of this year you weren't like the words national championship were not even in your dictionary (laughs) at that point and here you are with 18 perfect scores 21 wins all of a sudden, you have to start thinking about if you if you really want that big trophy, you guys have got to start thinking about the uh, the Asphalt Nationals at Dominion coming up later this year. And yeah, like national championship, we were like, OK, we might could get some wins, get some hundred points. We never even thought about going for a national championship. And once we started winning and getting a bunch of points, then uh, we were all like and my the my crew chief we're like all right we can we can go for this and have a shot at dominion so we've just once we got to about 10 we realized all right we can we can have a shot at this and we've been getting a a bunch of 100 points and we think we might could have a shot at battling for it at the end of the year I mean, that's what it's going to take if you ultimately max out that points total uh, for those who don't know how the uh, the NX championships are determined. If you max out that points total before we get to Asphalt Nationals, then basically it's similar to what the NASCAR guys do in Phoenix. It comes down to you going out and winning that last race of the year to uh, to earn the championship. Yeah, providing we get to that point, do you like that kind of pressure? Not really, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it is. There's nothing like the national championship race and Bandoleros when when I won it in 2022. There's really you don't feel the pressure when you're racing, even though you can lose it mm-hmm. just by getting second. So right. it's and going into Dominion, if I can get one more hundred point, it will be based off of if there's a couple people with nineteen hundred points. Mm-hmm if there's a couple people with that, it's basically who beat two. Right. So whoever beats everybody else, not, you don't have to win it because that's the last points race of the year. You just have you to just finish, have ahead, to of finish ahead. Else. Yep. So it's, it's really close at the end. So that's where we're at. 1800 point wins. You need one more perfect score to max the points total. And then, then the focus shifts, which is <laughs> like you said, it's exciting, but it, but it's a lot. I mean, it, when you sit and, and look at this, has, has it really hit you yet what all you guys have accomplished already this season? Or is it, are you still kind of in this whirlwind of 
everything's happening so fast, it's hard to really appreciate what you've done. Uh, that's how it is. It's really hard to to just think and sit and like, wow, <laughs> all right. But it's it's kind of went by so fast that you just don't even sure. think of it. I know you. I know you're an avid eye racer. We all know that. Um, and I know you actually surprisingly have had a couple of couple of scattered weeks off since the last uh, drive in five we did. It was there anything anything fun that you guys got to do as a family during any of the downtime, or was it pretty much there's been so much racing that it was nice just to have a week here and a week there to to relax at home and just recharge a bit. Uh, just relax at home. <laughs> we really haven't been able to do anything. Anyways, we went to a baseball game. That's pretty much it. <laughs> so we just kind of relaxed. The, every now and then we get home and we're only home for two or three days usually. So it's nice to just kind of chill at home when you're home for a week. <laughs> Braves game or local game? Uh, it's local. Uh, okay. the Shuckers and Biloxi. Okay. You're, you're over in Atlanta so much though. Are you a Braves fan? I'm not. I don't really watch a lot of baseball. It's just okay. fun to go to it every now and then. Nice. Biloxi. Nice. I got you. All right. So we'll wrap this one up as we always do. Give your shout out sponsors a thank you. Uh, who makes it happen for Cole Denton and the Fast 46? I want to thank my mom and dad, 77 Speed Shop, and Noah for a super fast car, and Matt Jones Motorsports, Race Face Brand Development, the Friends of Jacqueline Foundation, Myers Construction, most importantly, God. And uh, you mentioned it. I want to toss this in real quick. Um, have you got anything coming up with Friends of Jacqueline? Um, not sure yet, but we are working on some stuff for the Keep FOJ on the car. I knew we were working on that. So uh, we'll keep us posted on that, and we'll see what happens soon, Cole. Always a pleasure to have you on here, and we'll do it again in a couple of weeks. And, you know, fingers crossed, next time we hope we're talking about a Thursday Thunder championship in a couple of weeks. Hopefully so. <laughs> That's Cole Denton. My name's, as always, is Jacob Seelman. This has been another Race Face Drive in 5. We'll see you next time on RaceFace.tv, where you can go for all the latest in the world of motorsports.